Well, hi there. I love seemingly everything with the words Emerald Tree in their name. The Emerald Tree monitor is, in my opinion, the most beautiful monitor. I recently declared that to this point, I think that the Emerald Tree Skink is the best pet lizard, full stop. And I'll be honest, until recently, I didn't fully appreciate this animal, which is the Emerald Tree Boa. I thought of them as basically being like green tree pythons that happen to be live bearing boas from a different continent. I thought of them as being grumpy snakes with huge teeth that are extremely difficult to keep alive. And except for the teeth, I was wrong about everything. I was completely right about the teeth. They basically have a few dozen rattlesnake fangs going on in that mouth. I'll actually show you some compared to reticulated python teeth from like a great big retic. These are some extraordinary teeth. But these are quite possibly the most unique and extraordinary snakes that I have ever had the privilege to handle. There are just so many details about them that I didn't really notice until the first time I got to hold one. And one of the things that really stood out to me are their incredible labial heat pits. Boas and pythons often have these labial heat pits. They're, they, they detect infrared light, and, and so they can be used to detect the temperature of potential prey items and other things in their environment. Like I said, lots of snakes have them. The vipers, the pit vipers, have what are called l'oreal heat pits right up there on the front of their face, just two big ones. But lots and lots of boas and pythons have these pits. However, even in a world with lots of snakes with labial heat pits, I've never seen pits like these. They are so deep and distinctive and just chiseled and incredible. And, and the way that their head is shaped because they've got these incredible, powerful jaw muscles that I'll talk to you about here in a moment, but it causes their head to really flare out at the back, kind of right around, right under their eyes, sort of where their cheeks would be. And as a result, you know, you can see the pits really well on the top and bottom jaw, but back there under their eyes, they've got enormous pits. It's just, they're just unbelievable. And I'd never really noticed that until the very first time I was able to get up close and personal like this with an emerald tree boa. I mentioned those jaw muscles, they're nuts. I've never seen jaw muscles like this on a snake, at least not for the size of this snake. That head is enormous, like the head of a viper. In the back, it just gets huge, but it's, it's not venom glands that are back there. It's just those colossal jaw muscles because these snakes have some very serious jaws going on. And they're not only substantial in the jaws department, the whole snake it's just built of a different sort of a quality. Really, you know, a lot of snakes, well, they feel like typical snakes. This snake feels extra dense. Its scales have an additional texture, just sort of beyond what you feel from most snakes. I mean, honestly, like they remind me of a snake dragon hybrid. I've never really held any other snakes like them. They just, they feel very, very special. They're just a little bit more dense than they seem like they should be. And then to cap it all off, it would be hard to make a convincing argument that there are any snakes that are clearly more beautiful than this. They are so extremely gorgeous. And as it turns out, their reputation for being grumpy and hard to keep alive, those aren't accurate. So, they can be, as you can see here, extremely pleasant snakes. And I will tell you, of the two localities of emerald tree boas that you're likely to encounter, this is the one that everybody thinks has the bad temperament. Now, given the fact that I already have two of the emerald tree trifecta right here in Clint's Reptile Room, and actually right now, all three of them, the question for me is, is the emerald tree boa a good pet? And is it the best pet snake for me or you? And to help us figure this out, we are going to score the Emerald Tree Boa based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, shockingly, 
I give the Emerald Tree Boa a score of 4 out of 5. I do want to begin by saying that there are two different localities of Emerald Tree Boas that you're going to see in the pet trade. Those two localities are the Amazon Basin and the Northern. This one is a Northern. Of the two, the Amazon Basin Emerald Tree Boas, they get bigger. And I'm talking 7 to 9 feet versus less than 6 feet for a Northern. This is a pretty big female Northern. And if you got her all stretched out, she might be getting close to that maximum length. But these, these are smaller than the Amazon Basin Boas. The Amazon Basin Boas also have a reputation for being the calmer of the two. They apparently are generally what, what is often referred to as puppy dog tame, which is kind of silly, but they are uh, apparently very, very laid back, generally speaking. The Northerns, like this one, do not have that reputation. However, this particular Northern belongs to my good friend Richard Bilbo, and I can tell you all of his snakes are like this. Not just his emerald tree boas, but everything he keeps. His reticulated pythons, his indigo snakes, all of them. They're, they're not head shy. And that has to do with the way that he works with them. So what I can tell you is, if you put in the work with these snakes, and you have the right temperament for it, and you don't fear them, they will not fear you either. No matter which locality you have, during the day, these are going to be, well, pretty much just delightful. And, and the way to distinguish between the Amazon Basin Emerald Tree Boa and the Northern Emerald Tree Boa is largely going to come down to looking at this pattern. You can see both of these localities are generally green in color with white kind of diamonds or little arrows pointing down, coming down from the center. But on the Basin Emerald Tree Boas, you're going to see a complete white dorsal stripe on most of them that connects all that other pattern and runs down their back. Whereas the northern locality, they don't tend to have anything like that. Uh, the other thing that you can look for is the astronomically high price on the Basin Emerald Tree Boas. Let's put it this way. If someone isn't advertising that it's a Basin locality, it isn't. And if they are saying that it's a Basin locality, double check. But the rankings that I'm going to give to this snake are going to be for the northern locality, since more than likely, that is the one that you're going to be getting. The basin locality will more than likely be absolutely delightful during the day. And northerns, like this one, might take a little bit of work. And again, that isn't to say that they can't become wonderful, but they might not be that way coming out of the box. And know that a bite from an adult will be memorable. At night, be very careful. When you grab food as it runs or flies by in the dark, you grab warm things and ask questions later. Other than the risk of a bite, which is, you know, uh, more likely to happen at night as, as a mistaken feeding response, these are absolutely delightful to handle. They're not quick. You can see the way that this snake moves, and I'm trying to be respectful of that, and I'm trying to move slowly and methodically. This snake lives high, high, high up in the trees. And sort of like what you see maybe from chameleons, when you live up high in the trees, you're very careful about all of your movements because if you're not so careful, you don't reproduce. They also can hold on really, really well. Again, because they live up in the treetops, being able to hold on well is everything for these snakes. And honestly, you can give them just the tip of their tail with which to hold onto your fingers and they can support their entire body from that tiny location. They don't scratch and they can't drop their tails. So they got all that going for them. But for a non-venomous snake that is no bigger than these are, that bite is a doozy. I want to take just a moment to say thank you to our rad fans and stinking rad fans at Patreon who actually made it possible for me to go out to Nerd earlier this year, back before the world fell into chaos. And that is where I held my first Emerald Tree Boa. And since then, everything has changed for me. And that never would have happened without you. And this video might not have happened without you. So thank you so much to our patrons. When it comes to care, and again, this is a complete surprise to me, 
we give the Emerald Tree Boa a score of four out of five. The, the care is actually amazingly simple for these snakes once you get it right. Proper temperatures, humidity, and ventilation are all essential. So get that dialed in long before your snake arrives. The enclosure should actually be fairly large. The enclosure should be somewhat vertically oriented because this is an arboreal snake, but they will make good use of horizontal space as well. That's something that often they don't receive. But activity, especially at night, is actually fairly important for these snakes. We used to think that they just hung out up high in the treetops and really didn't move around. They just waited for something to come to them. But as we've examined their diet and, and their gut contents in the wild, what we've found is they're eating a lot of ground-dwelling rodents and other mammals. And so at night, they're coming down from the treetops and they're hunting things that are walking by. These snakes move around in the canopy a lot and being able to move around like that can actually be very, very important for their overall health. One thing you're gonna need to make sure that that enclosure has is multiple good perches. That's where your snake is gonna be almost always, especially during the day. And make sure that the perches are not too large, especially for smaller snakes. They can end up with like some sort of kinking in their, in their tails if they're holding on to too large of a perch all the time. So they actually prefer a smaller perch. Make sure they have access to water. That's gonna be really important. And a misting system is a good idea to maintain a fairly constant humidity. Just make sure that it's not spraying right onto the perch where the snake is sitting. Uh, that can cause them to become wet and cold and they just don't like it. Make sure you have some, some real or fake plants in the enclosure to give them a little bit of cover so they can feel more secure. And a substrate that holds humidity is a good idea, uh, especially because it won't get soiled very often because these snakes don't eat all that often and they don't poop very often. These guys are gonna be relaxed during the day but ready to go at night. And so whenever you have to do cleanings or anything like that, try to get those done during the day because it's a whole other animal once the lights go off. Again, these are nighttime hunters. So during the day, they're gonna be just wrapped up on a perch, not doing a whole lot. It's not a good time to feed them. You feed them at night. And they do really well on a diet, primarily of rodents like rats and mice. This is what they're eating largely in the wild. And one thing, we talked about these pits before, but that prey must be warm. They know. We used to think that these were bird eaters, being up in the trees and all, but mammals actually make up the bulk of their diet in the wild. So it's unsurprising that they do well on this diet in captivity as well. As adults, these are only gonna eat every few weeks. Like most boas, they have a slow metabolism and like most boas, they love to eat. So it's easy to overfeed them, but to maintain a healthy boa, these only need to eat like every three weeks, maybe once a month as adults, a little more often as juveniles. And because they don't eat very often, they don't poop very often either. So your maintenance for this snake is actually fairly low and they do really well with fairly simple setups. And so that's why they get such a high score. It surprises me too. When it comes to hardiness, and this is another shocker to me, we give the Emerald Tree Boa a score of four out of five. Now I'm making a huge assumption here. I'm assuming that you're getting a captive bred snake. That score is still surprising as, you know, we spent a long time trying to figure these snakes out. And most of the snakes that we were keeping early on were wild caught. But now that we know what we're doing and we're working primarily with captive bred animals, this snake is one that can be kept successfully with consistency. Just make sure that you get your temperatures and your humidity dialed in before they get to you. Make sure that the temperature of your feeders are elevated so that they can recognize them as food because they know. And then the last thing is make sure this snake can get some exercise. Make sure it has space to move around or they can develop digestive issues, which eventually could cost you your snake. However, if it's captive bred, it should do great. Now, of course, this score falls through the floor if you're getting one that is wild caught or, or even far, a farmed import, because those are gonna come in with all sorts of parasites and they're very likely gonna crash on you. 
And, and the reality is they're tempting because they're less expensive, but they're less expensive because they're much, much worse. And I can tell you a 1,000 or even a $4,000 live snake is better than a $400 dead snake. When it comes to availability, we give the Emerald Tree Boa a score of two out of five. These are actually being bred very successfully, but right now there aren't too many breeders. As a result, don't expect to see them at pet shops, but they will be at, like if you go to a really awesome expo, there will be some there, but in small numbers. Going straight to the breeder, that's the way to get one. And they're out there. And if you're prepared to give them the proper care, then the only thing that's really gonna stop you from getting one is probably just money. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Emerald Tree Boa a score of two out of five. As long as you're happy with a Northern locality Emerald Tree Boa, the snake will probably be captive bred in the neighborhood of $1,000. However, if you want a basin locality, expect to pay more like $4,000. Everything else is pretty reasonable. This enclosure's not a super crazy enclosure to get. You're gonna need a heat source and a thermostat. A hygrometer is a very good idea. Possibly a misting system, though you can get away with just a spray bottle. A water bowl, definitely a water bowl. And I'd recommend putting that down low so the snake has to cruise around in order to get there. Generally speaking, a water bowl doesn't come to their face when they're up in the trees and you need to get them some exercise. Substrate, though, I mean, you can use a wide diversity of substrates. These don't poop very often and they don't go down to the ground very often. So it's not that big of a deal. And after that, you're done. And for this reason, and it still shocks me, we give the Emerald Tree Boa a score of 3.2 out of 5. I want to take just a moment right now to give Richard Bilbo, who is an absolutely incredible keeper of snakes, a moment just to talk about these amazing snakes and a little bit about how he ends up with such incredibly well-tempered snakes, even ones that people generally think of as not being so easy to handle. His are just out of this world. I've had these animals, these two, male and female. I've had both of them for over 11 years. This one I got nipped by once when he was about, probably about seven months or eight months after I purchased him. And it was because I had a big boa that I brought over the top of the cage and he saw it and it scared him. And he fell down to the bottom of the cage. And I just, I knew I was going to get bit, but I was afraid he was going to hurt himself. So I reached in, I grabbed him, and he grabbed my arm. And he was mad. You could see him, he was doing the whole, like this with these jaw muscles going. But then he let go, and that was it. But they're extremely handleable animals. I think it has to do with the more you handle them, the more they get accustomed to it. And, uh, you know, you can... You can do just about, I don't know what you do to get this animal mad. You know, just, you just, you, they just don't. They're extremely tolerant. And uh, I know digestive issues can be a problem. Uh, that's why I keep the water bowls down on the bottom. Their teeth are big. They have really large teeth. And part of the reason of their size of their teeth is because when they do eat birds, birds have got a lot of feathers. So to be able to get through the feathers, to be able to grab to the meat of the animal, they have to have something that's going to penetrate that. Most people have a tendency to try to keep them really wet. My animals, these animals, I only miss them about four to five times a month. That's it, about once a week. And, and more often when they go into shed. I'll miss them daily when they're in shed. Uh, <clears throat> some people say don't spray them directly. I spray them directly. You know, it's like if they're out in the wild and they get rain, the rain's not going to go around them. You know what I mean? Mm. It's going to go right on them. So being accustomed to that, I think, makes it to where they're not as apprehensive about it happening. Their pattern is, is to mimic sunlight. When they coil up on the branches, it's to mimic the sunlight going through the leaves so they blend. Other than that, these are my babies. They're just a fantastic animal that I'll have. Thank you, Richard. That was incredible. The Emerald Tree Boa is not for everyone. 
Um, I wouldn't really recommend one as your first snake, but it is an incredible animal. And it isn't nearly as unreasonable as it once was, not by any means. And I definitely want one of these someday. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Oh, what a day. This is a good day. Girl. Look at how delightful she is. See, not that many people have booped an emerald tree boa, especially the grumpy emerald tree boa locality, on the jaw muscles with their nose, but I have. <laughs>